Hi, this is Father Joseph Mary. I'm with the Capuchin Franciscans, and we're here today on this third Sunday of Advent in St. Patrick's Oratory. It's the church attached to Our Lady of Light Monastery, where our Capuchin Pork Clare sisters have lived and served and prayed for many decades now. As you can see, we've lit the third candle on the Advent wreath, the, the rose candle, and this signifies that we're in Gaudete Sunday, and Gaudete means to rejoice because the birth of Christ is so much closer now. We're almost there. Now in, the, in this video, we wanna look at how do we pray through this Advent season, right? We've got a week left. How do we pray through Advent? How do we uh, use this time, this liturgical time that the church has given us to deepen our relationship with God? Advent is all about being prepared, preparing ourselves. And I remember when I was younger, my parents went away on a vacation. They left my brother and I at home. We were in high school. And, you know, when mom's not around, we kind of did our own thing. We didn't do the laundry. We let it all kind of pile up. We weren't too conscientious about cleaning the kitchen. And she would call every day or so and just, just check in with us, see how we were doing, remind us that she was coming home soon. We said, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, we'll, we'll make sure the house is clean. Well, finally, the night before, she called and she says, remember, your dad and I will be home tomorrow afternoon. And we said, uh-huh, my brother and I, we got plenty of time, you know? And so we went to bed and we didn't wake up till 10 in the morning. Then we're scrambling, trying to get everything ready. And my mom and dad walk in the door and my mom looked at the house like a bomb had gone off, right? Nothing was as it should have been. We knew my mom and dad were coming home. We just didn't take the time to prepare and do the things necessary for their homecoming, for their arrival. This is what Advent's trying to remind us, that we need to be ready, we need to prepare, because Christ is coming. The word Advent comes from Adventus, it means the coming, and it's the Latin translation of the Greek word parousia. Parousia refers in Greek to the coming of a king. And so in Advent, we're preparing for the coming of a king. Now, traditional Catholic spirituality teaches us that there's really three comings of Christ. Right? There's the coming of Christ, in the Incarnation, when God breaks into human history, when he changes everything, when he begins to rewrite the story. And then there's the coming of Christ at the end of all things, right? The parousia, the final coming. And yet we live somehow in between. And this is the third coming, that Christ is coming to us every day of our lives. And this is how, how we can enter into the spirituality and the praying of Advent. Because when we go to pray, we reflect on what was happening during the time of Jesus, on how God chose to use all the circumstances of his time to prepare for the Messiah, we can bring that into our daily prayer to see how God's doing the same thing today. What I mean by that, look at what's happening during the time of Jesus. When you begin to meditate on this in your prayer, right, you have this young woman, this, this Mary living in Nazareth, and all of a sudden she's, uh, she's in, as an unplanned pregnant, Pregnancy, right? She's an unwed mother. There's a scandal. There's a, a hurried divorce. There's a, a census. There's a fleeing into Egypt. There's a slaughter of innocent children. There's all of these things going on that seem painful and horrible to us. And yet, through it all, Mary continued to say in her prayer, I am the handmaid of the Lord. I trust. I believe. And God brings about the greatest of all miracles. He becomes human. He joins himself to our nature and enters into our mess. And so when we think about these and reflect upon these things in our prayer, we can see that God's doing the same thing today. And so we look around our life, we bring the events of our life to prayer, the good and the bad and the ugly. Right? We bring our things that are confusing us, our doubts, our pains, the wounds in our relationships, the struggles in our marriage, the difficulties with our children, the things going on in the world and in the culture. And we can be tempted to think God's not acting, God's not here. It's too dark. But the light's shining in the darkness. The darkness can never overcome it. This is the lesson of the incarnation. So if we can take and reflect on what was happening in the time of Jesus, and realize the same thing's happening now. Again, he came in a hidden way. And today he's coming to us in a hidden way. He's going to come at the end of the world in a way that's not hidden at all. But in our prayer, as we're preparing for this, as we're preparing for Christmas, as we're preparing to meet Christ, whether at the end of our life or the end of the world, we have to reflect on the first in order to understand how he comes to us today in the little ordinary things. Because our God is extraordinary, but he works through the ordinary. 
He has that still, small voice. He's that whisper of wind that Elijah could barely hear. And so as we continue during this season of Advent, I invite you to reflect deeply upon what was happening in the Old Testament, and what was happening with all of the prophets and all of the people were preparing for this first coming of Christ. What was happening in Nazareth in the lives of Joseph and Mary? What was happening during their, their passage to Bethlehem and their fearful flight from Egypt? God was working through every bit of that. And I invite you to take your experiences today, the things you're going through, and to present them to God in prayer and ask him, Lord, help me to see today how you're doing the same thing in my life. This is the spirituality of Advent. Let's be prepared because God's coming. Christ is coming. We want to make sure the house is in order. We thank you again for watching with us. Uh, we hope you have a blessed Advent and a very Merry Christmas. And we invite you to join us next week as we continue this series on prayer.